Hi guys, this is Engineer Zishan Akbar with the third lecture on theory of structures. In this lecture, I will teach you the analysis of frames, specifically the determinate frames. So let's start with the topic. The basic focus will be be on the analysis of determinate plane frames in this lecture we will only discuss determinate plane frames so a frame is a structure composed of straight line members simply these are straight line members straight line means that may be vertical that may be horizontal members or that may be inclined members but they will always be straight line members the members may be connected by rigid joints pin connected joints and semi rigid joints this is a common type of frame structure but there are further divisions in a frame structure the first one is a truss what is a truss a truss is a structure or a type of frame in which all the joints are pin connected it means that there will be pins between each two members if you can see here this is a figure this is member one two three you can see here this member is connected to this member by a pin connection next there is also a pin connection so it means simply that there will be no transfer of bending moment in case of frames or in case of trusses so there will be only two equations of equilibrium applicable that is summation forces summation of forces along x-axis and summation of forces along y-axis will be zero but moment equation will not be applied in case of trusses so it is written here if all the joints are pins which transfer transmit or transfer no bending moments the frame is commonly called a truss the next is frame if all the joints are rigid so in truss and frame the basic difference is the type of joints if all the joints are pins all the joints keep your concentration of this point that all the joints are pins then the structure is known as truss and if all the joints are rigid then the uh, here in frame there is no restriction for all the joints there may be some of the joints rigid at some of the joints may be pins Th those may be internal pins or somewhere like these but frames can transmit bending moment also Trusses can never transmit bending moments, but frames can transmit bending moments as well. So here you can see the examples of frames. A rigid frame is one in which some or all of its joints are rigid. It means all joints are rigid or fixed. Rigid frames are usually statically indeterminate. This lecture will be confined to determine determinate plane frames in a plane frame all the members and loading must be in the same plane mean it may be in x y axis it may be in y z but it may be in same plane it may be in x y plane or y z or x z plane uh, that may be any plane but that will concentrate only on two axes x y or y z or z x so procedure for the analysis of determinate plane frames is very simple if you will concentrate on anything or every step in your first instance and your first uh, attempt, you will easily get every point clearly. A frame is completely analyzed when its support reactions and variations in axial force, shear force and bending moment along all its members are found. So the analysis of a determinate frame means three, four things. The first thing is to determine the support reactions. Support reactions may be forces or moments. And second one is axial forces along all the members, shear forces of all the members, and bending moments of all the members. So simply the step one is to find the support reactions. You will find out the support reactions by how you will find out the support reactions. If you don't know how to determine the support reaction, I will put uh, links for the videos in which I have determined the support reactions for different beams as you will know how to apply the equations of equilibrium on any structure So find the support reaction is the first step in analysis of determinate frames or indeterminate frame all, for, all of these 
how will you determine the support reaction by using the equation of equilibrium and the equations of conditions if any if you face any internal hinge or internal pin you will be able to apply any equation of special condition that may, that is called as c find the member end forces mean you will divide the whole frame into different members at every joint you will cut the frame and you will get the number of different members so you will find the member and forces for each frame that is very simple step so the first step in this finding the member forces is take each member and joint as a free body you will divide the whole structure into different members and different joints find the axial force of each member and joint find the shear force for each member and joint and find the bending moment at the ends of member and each joint so at second step each free body diagram must show all external loads support reaction and possible internal forces acting on the member and joint so it means that when you are going to draw the free body diagram you have to show all the loads acting on that member or joint support reactions and possible internal forces mean moments shear forces or internal forces uh, uh, normal forces so at the third point a rigid joint can transmit two force components that is v that is shear force and n that is normal force and a moment keep in mind that a rigid joint is like a fixed support if you see a rigid joint in any frame then you will behave or you will consider it as a fixed support and it will have three reactions that is shear force normal force and a moment but at a hinge the internal moment is zero it means you will have only two reactions for internal hinge that will be v and n then in the last step or third step you will find out the uh, you will plot the axial force shear force and bending moment diagrams on an outline of the frame that may be outline that may be in line but you will uh, follow the same scale for drawing the shear force axial force and bending moments for the frame so here is the first example for analysis of a determinate plane frame that what is the question statement the question statement is very simple determine the support reactions draw the axial force diagram shear force diagram and bending moment diagrams for the frame this frame is given to you and here the statement is written that joint b is a rigid joint it means that we will have three reactions on this joint v n and m because this is a rigid joint if this is going to be a uh, pin joint or hinge joint then it will have only these two reactions and moment will be zero at this point <clears throat> so simply if we are going to solve this question this statement for this frame then first of all we will have to draw the free body diagram with nominations of reactions for each support each load length of member all the members etc so first of all at support a there is a fixed support at point a there is a fixed support so for this fixed support there are three reactions one is vertical second is horizontal and third reaction is moment reaction and at b is a rigid joint and at c point where two loads are acting on this point one is horizontal right rightward horizontal load 2 kN and downward vertically downward load of 10 kN so this is the free body diagram there is only change between this technical diagram and a free body diagram that you will show the reactions of the supports all the supports you have one two or as many supports you will show all the reactions for all the supports because there are only three unknowns in this frame va ha and ma and we have three equations of equilibrium so simply you can say that that this is an determinate frame this is a determinate frame and we can easily draw its axial force shear force and bending moment diagram so moving towards the solution of the example and we will take this free body diagram as the reference this free body diagram is taken as reference for the solution of this problem so if we follow this diagram simply this is the free body diagram of you can see here and you will use equation of equilibrium as summation of forces along x is equal to 0 
it means this force you can see is acting along the x-axis and we can assume that these are this is x-axis and vertical axis is known as y-axis so simply two forces are in the direction of x-axis this two kilonewton in rightward direction so we will assume it as positive and this ha is in negative direction we will assume it as negative left direction so it is a negative so we can write here simply as minus ha plus 2 is equal to 0 because there are only two forces if we transfer this h to this side this will become like this one that h a reaction horizontal reaction at support a is equal to 2 kilonewton so if we move forward towards the vertical forces then the second equation of equilibrium is summation of vertical forces about uh, along y axis is equal to 0 it means we have two forces first one is 10 kilonewton acting downward this is minus 10 because acting downward and other reaction is VA this you can see here VA is acting in upward direction we will write it as plus VA because VA is acting upward so if you solve this and shift this 10 to this direction this side then you will get HA equal to 10 kilo Newton so we have found two reactions horizontal and vertical reaction the remaining is MA here and we will consider for this that moment about point A is equal to summation of clockwise and would uh, simply take this equation as summation of clockwise moments equal to summation of counterclockwise moments. So simply here we can write it as MA is a counterclockwise moment and these both are causing clockwise moments so simply we will write as clockwise moment is 10 and vertical distance of 10 this 10 is causing moment about point A so this will be the distance vertical distance from point of application of load to point A this is 4 meters plus and this 2 kilo newton is also rotating this frame in clockwise direction about point A so the distance vertical distance of 2 kN from this point A is 6 meter so simply we can write as 2 multiply by 6 and this will be equal to MA and here MA will be found to be 52 kN meters so this is unit of moment at A for any moment you will take the unit as kilonewton meter so if we move towards the axial force diagram because we have found all the reaction so simply we will again divide this frame in three pieces member vertical member number one joint b and horizontal member number one so this is member one this is member two and this is joint b simply we will write reactions here this reaction you yeah, we have found this reaction as 10 kilonewton and this horizontal reaction as 2 kN and this moment reaction as 52 kN meter. So if you draw these reactions at this point and you will be easily able to draw reactions on this point as well in opposite directions. You can see here a vertical reaction of 10 kN in upward direction at this end you will draw downward 10 kN. You can understand that we have 10 kN in vertical upward direction and this 10 will be in vertical downward direction. So simply these are equal to each other but opposite in direction. You can see here 2 kN in leftward direction you will put a 2 kN load in rightward direction on the upper side of the member B and simply you have this anti-clockwise moment on the lower side of this member and you will draw 40 kN here in here why this 40 why this 40 is written here because here the moment is 52 kN but when you move in this vertical direction this force 2 is causing a clockwise moment so we will write as 52 minus 2 multiply by the distance between 
this B point and this A point is 6 meter. So the net movement will be 40 kilonewton meter. So it is here written as 40 but in opposite direction. So this, when you draw exact values or correct values for this point, then you will be able to draw or put the exact values for this joint B. So simply you will copy these values in upper direction, opposite direction for this joint B. This is 10 downward, you will put upward down 10. This is rightward to do, you will put leftward to because this and this joint are same. This joint will carry these moments are these reactions in opposite direction so this is 10 downward this 10 will be upward this 2 is rightward this 2 will be rightward leftward and this 40 is counter clockwise then your moment resisting moment for b will be clockwise that is 40. so again these reactions are all on the right side of the b joint these are on left side or on bottom side and these are on right side. Simply you will revert the direction or you will reverse the direction uh, for all these things at this point. What will you do? This is vertical 10. You will draw verti uh, vertical downward 10. There 2 is leftwards. You will do right to rightwards. And this is counterclockwise. You will draw clockwise movement. And for same this point, you will reverse the direction for all these values. To get all these values, you will have to reverse the direction for all these values. So here you, you can see the forces along the length of the members. The forces along the length of the members, this 10 and this 10 are known as normal forces. Forces at right angle to the member are known as shear forces and forces in curved direction are rotational effects forces are known as moments so simply in each figure you will write down relevant forces for shear force you can see here we will consider this 10 only and this 10 is compressing the member this is downward this is upward so they will compress the member so it is written as minus 10 here so compressive normal forces are taken as negative and tensile normal forces are taken as positive so here it is minus 10 here is 10 and here also this is 10 so simply we can write it as this is moving from 10 to 10 so no change in value of the so this value is negative simply when we reach at b the normal force here you can see the normal force is simply 2 and this is causing tensile force because this is acting in this direction and this 2 is acting in this direction so simply they are elongating the member so this is a tensile force and it will be positive this is negative and this is positive this is drawn above the frame in the same manner you can draw the shear force here the shear force is 2 leftward here the shear force is 2 rightward mean they are cancelling each other or they are going to stable the structure so in same manner this is here two shear forces to here the, also the shear forces to we can draw it to the left side and this is taken as positive <coughs> shear force and here this is also two but in this case you can see the shear force is 10 acting upward so this is 10 and at point 10 there is no support so the shear force will be equal to 10 just left of c and it will become zero at c it is going up to 10 and then it moves towards 10 just left and when it will reach c then it becomes zero and for moment the same scenario is adopted that our initial moment is counterclockwise that is negative minus 52 so this is minus 52 counterclockwise moment is treated as negative at the bottom and this 40 is same counter this countering this moment and it will be minus 40 here minus 40 because we got this moment as 40 by the application of equations this will be minus 40 you will start this from minus 40 same as it because here the value is minus 40 and we stopped here as minus 40 so minus 40 and then we will go to zero because there is no support or no joint so the moment here will be zero thank you very much